BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers, Rapala and Yamaha. Welcome everybody to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. I'm your host, Mike Mitchell. Today we're fishing again with a good friend, Mike Fortmuller, Vice President of Shearwater Marine Resort. Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. Good to have you up here on the beautiful Central Coast. All right, I think today we're gonna go after some coho. Yes. And I think instead of just trolling around, we're gonna make it a little bit of a game for us and see if we can't uh, have a little friendly competition. Okay. Among friends, that's okay. You yeah. into that? I am. All right, <laughs> that's good. So I think the rules are going to be is two rods per, per side of the boat. So one side will be designated your side, and the other side will be mine, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, all the gear we're going to use is only out of my bag. So none of your secret stuff that you may have. It's all got to be stuff that's out of my tickle trunk here. That's fine. We have some various coyote flashers, some J plugs some various spoons, coyote spoons and uh, blue matrix, blue fox matrix spoons. We have our lure Jensen flash flies mm -hmm. and also some storm wiggle warts we could throw on there. Which and again, pretty wicked action on those storm yeah, wiggle warts. Yeah, those will be those will be interesting to see if we can pick up some coho on those. And of course, if we're going to use bait, we'll uh, rig them up with some gammies. Yes. Sound good? It is. I'm game if you're game. All right. I think what's the what's the winner going to get? What's the loser going to get? Maybe losers got to well, clean. Well, the losers going to have to clean the kingfisher. All right. So if you're as long as you're okay, you know, are you good with the scrub brush? Because I know why I am. Well, I've I'm been not, doing it all. Yeah, I'm not worried about it because I think you're going to have to do it anyway. So <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. All right. Perfect. Uh, all right. Let's get some fish. Thanks. Because we're after coho, I'm running my top rod further back because coho tend to have an insane ability to tangle lines, which is no big problem for me. I think Mr. Mitchell will. Mike, where's the release clips? You already took my I spare took release one. clip. I only have one clip. Oh, look at that fish on already. I can't believe this. No, no, Mike. no, I only had, I, you know Mike's what, this only is got, only down to Mike's got, Look, you're getting action on yours right now. Mike's got three clips on the boat. We need four. So he takes the two, gets his this rod set up, makes me look for this stuff, and then he gets a fish on. And by the way, I had to pull it out of his rod holder to set the hook for him because he was in there farting around. Because so. I was looking for that release yeah, clip yeah. for you. That's fine. We got first fish on. You know what, I'm even going to be a good guy here and help you clear that out of the no, way. No, no, so that's okay. I can right. do I can do All right, all right. Pro guide. We got one on already. Clear this other rod here. How deep was that, Mike? That was only down about 25 feet. Yeah. On a uh, flash fly. Yeah, okay. What color did you use? Uh, blue, purple? Yep. A blue magoo. The blue magoo. Right on. Okay. Fish is still out there. It here. came up and it was flying sideways beside the boat. Are we in gear still? Yeah, because I'm trying to catch a fish for you, too. Oh, look at that. There's a release clip. Oh, oh I'm starting to show herself. Nice big chrome coho. Is that a good one? You want to net that one, Mike? Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Beautiful. Let's net him, eh? Oh, that's the purple haze one, not Where's the blue. That? Not the blue magoo one. That's a great fish. <laughs> Woo! That is awesome. What's up, buddy? Thanks, Way Mike. To go. Way to go. Good Appreciate job, man. Out there. Hey? Good job. Way to go. Nice, all right. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> <a> good fish. <laughs> and that was only down 25 feet. Yeah. 
I think I think we might have found the spot this morning. Well, when we just when we just started trolling there, just off to the point behind us. We had three that rods. Like... That's it. Three rods out. Couldn't even get the fourth one out. Yeah. And, and they already started, started jumping. And they're bouncing around. All right, you can talk about your fish. Well, I'm just going to put this into gear so I can actually get my rods working here. The uh, scrub brush is down there, yeah. the side gunnel. All right, and I know where the soap, soap is, is back on the deck. At the lodge, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah but well, that's only one. It's got three more to get, so. What I found? I found another clip. Would you like to fish two rods, or are you just want to be maybe give me the advantage and you fish one and I get two? It's up to you. I'll let you fish two. Thanks, buddy. I need all the help I can get yeah, today. Yeah, apparently. Apparently. And for the record, I'm still down one nothing. We're coming to the hot spot here. No way. Oh. Oh, yeah. There she goes. She's off the release clip now. Slow down the troll a bit here. Keep the rest of the gear in the water. I was just thinking. Chance for a double header, potentially. This is actually quite interesting. That was on the inside turn, which normally, especially for coho, you get, when you turn the boat around, the outside rod starts speeding up. And that's when the coho will attack normally. Like that's what happened yesterday quite a bit. No one never knows. Oh, you have the hooks in the water. Fish is coming to the boat pretty quick. Yes. What's that one on, Whoa. Mike? Oh! <laughs> Under the downrigger. <laughs> Over this rod here. Oh. Oh, that's what I love about coho fishing. You never know what's going to happen. This is on the... Uh, the same one, the purple flash fly. Yeah, this guy's dancing everywhere. Need some help over there? Sure, if you want to come grab the rod. Little trick here at the gaff, you can line the, put the gaff end and the hooks and then there the salmon turns away. So that's so two. Easy. That's two now, yeah. Huh, so that's two nothing. I'm not keeping score. I am. Do you know what they say though in hockey? The two goal lead is the worst lead to have. Too bad we're not playing hockey. Right? Yeah, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> we're fishing for coal. Take your, I'm, I'm trying. Can we put the boat get back in gear here? I want to catch a fish. Yeah. No. It's not going to happen. Stay tuned for more BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Closed captioning brought to you by Linex. We're back after uh, a couple of quick bites there. What, we have a pink chum. Pink and a chum, yeah, yeah. Small that. Chinook. Oh, cool. Yeah, two so far. Mike's up still 2 nothing. Well, we've Just had some small ones, but those don't, don't count. The little no, shakers. Those don't count, no. So we'll, uh, we got a chance quickly to talk about Shearwater. What Shearwater is about. What kind of amenities do you guys have here? And you're like, well, we've got the fishing lodge. Yeah. Uh, we do boat rentals as well. We've got a campground. We've got a BC ferry terminal and a restaurant, full service restaurant, pub, yeah. grocery store, hardware store, laundromat. Um, it's really its own community almost in a way, isn't it? It's we are. kind of like your own community. We're, we're the main central hub between, between Port Hardy and Prince Rupert. Yeah, we've got yeah. a full marina, we do fuel sales. So if somebody wants to come up, and say a do-it-yourself or one of our viewers wants to come up and take part of this and wants to bring their own boat and stuff, how do they do that? Well, they can either, if, they, if they're willing to travel the distance from either Port Hardy or Bella Coola, they can do that by water. Or, like I said earlier, we've got a ferry terminal, so BC Ferry stops in during the summer months. Yeah. We've got an RV park, campground, plus then in addition to the fishing lodge, we also then have another hotel. Yeah. So people can come up, you know, and they, they can launch their boat. And, yeah. Yeah, they got the tips fuel. from you how to where to, where to go and how to oh, get yeah. some fish. Oh yeah, the guides are very very uh, forthwith with with information as to the hot spots. Yeah, good. No, it's 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 a uh, it's a fun place to be. And of course, you know you've seen you know uh, the, the fishing the fishing's not bad either up here. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Eh? <laughs> That's good. Yeah, <laughs> let's get some more fish, shall we? Yeah. All right. So. I've I haven't had much luck yet with my uh, choice of lure, so I'm gonna switch over to bait, of course, with the gammies here. So I'll just run a cut plug off the back here. I'm not gonna tell Mike, of course. 
we go finally oh wow. that's a good fish too oh there we go I was just changing up let that one down to 20 feet Mike and it popped just like that just like that yeah so now the trick is for this to be a coho that's what we're after here I've seen to be having lots of luck with everything else which is okay you know you had a lot of fun fighting I don't those. mind fighting any fish oh. but I just don't want to I don't want to have to clean the boat that's the thing Catch and release. I hate losing. No, that's fine. It looked pretty bad, too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> nice coal. See, that's a northern coal. You got that hook nose on it starting yeah. right now? Okay, let's get the net, Mike, because I think he's ready. Okay. We'll keep this one. There, there we, we go. go. Whoa. That now might be angry. a little bigger than mine, Mike. Now we're down. I'm down 2-1. That is a big coal. <laughs> Look at That is a pig. Well, when you got it on the dill pickle. I did. So I switched over to the dill pickle and finally got one off that. And that was right over that little hump we seemed to find here, right? Eh? Yeah, yeah. It rises up from probably about 400 feet up to 77 feet. So you got a lot of bait that's circling that area there. Yeah. We've got the tide rips going on right now. Yeah. Awesome. That's what we wanted. Another one. We'll get the hooks out of this and we'll show the viewers. Good job. Good job, bud. Nice looking coho. Coho. Good fish. Yeah, the northern coho. You can see that the hook starting to form there on the... Yeah. In the top jaw. What do you think he runs? 12? It's going to be a good 12 pounds. Yeah. 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 A little so later again, on in the season, we'll get some, the northerns getting in here, you know, 18, yeah. 20 pounds. We've already had uh, one at 23. Wow. A few at 20 pounds. Yeah. Wow. That's an awesome fish. Yeah, it is. So is this though. That's nothing to shake a stick at. And that's 2-1. <laughs> Back in Catch the game. Up. Back in the game. Oh, look at that. Just kidding. <laughs> that is awesome. You have a look at that, Mike? What it was? No, I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. He's coming right to the boat here. And. What do you think it is? What, coho? That's a pink. That's a sockeye. It's a chum? No, no, that's a coho. <laughs> that's a coho. That would be 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, it is, unfortunately. That's good. We're still, we're still OK then. Yeah, yeah. Let's get this guy off, because I don't think we need to keep this guy. Oh, he's going right to the motor. Nice fish. Good fish. Nice fish, good fish. Two fish. Blue fish. Two fish piece. <laughs> <laughs> and the game's on. Oh, you got another one biting on this on your outside rod now, Mike. You just had a bump on it. Did we? Yeah. Well, the bite could be back on here. So we've gone through a bit of a lull. Which is good. It's had me, give me a chance to refocus my zen. And I'm back in the game now. Two, two. There we go. Nice. Thank you, sir. Cut the tension with the knife right now. <laughs> the game's on. Oh, there we go. Feel heavy, buddy, oh, or what? Yeah, it's a good one. Just making sure the drag was set properly. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, there he is. And I just had switched this over. Mike thought he'd be sneaky there and add a second flasher to a hoochie. And I put this, this glow, coyote glow flasher on with one of the Lure Jensen coyote spoons and hooked up within minutes on that turn. What does that put us at, Mike? What's the score now? What's that, bud? I'm not very good at math. What's the score? What are we at now? Uh, is this if you, three? in fact, is this can land. Three, two. No, if stand this by. comes in. All right. All right. If, in fact, you can land this. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. And this doesn't include landing it, meaning you can't knock it off of the net either, though. Right? Can I splash the water no. near the fish? No. You're not allowed to do that. Oh, that's a pink. No, it's not. <laughs> Don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. Okay, this looks good. Let's do a quick net job here and we'll let them go, I think. Or if you actually want to just reach in, Mike, and we'll pop this one off with the, with the gaff if you want. Here, you want to use the net? Yeah. Okay. Let's bring them up. Ew. Sorry about that. The net got caught on the, uh, on the clip here. 
I wasn't trying. No, I'm sure he weren't. <laughs> now, he's lass- now he's lassoed himself around and he's really mad now. <laughs> Ouch. And he's going to wrap himself around the cables. Don't go that way. Not that line. No, come on. Oh, we're out of trouble here. There we go. Okay. A little bit of drama. It's nice to have the long wingspan. Are you sure you didn't do that on purpose? Because that was <laughs> funny. On purpose. No, it's the little snaps on the side of the vessel here. All right. Strategically placed. All right. So. Net it head first. Oh, look at that. Okay. That's great. Just want to loosen off on the tension there. Three, two. I'm up. We'll Come from this. behind. Well, you know what? We're not counting those little ones as your little fish. We always say, out here in the fishing world, don't gloat until you win. Yeah. I'm not really gloating. I'm just saying. It just shows true grit. Are you an egg farmer? No, I'm not an egg farmer. What does no, that no, mean? No, you don't count, you count your chicken still. Oh, bad. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. And I'm getting another bite on that other rod right there, too. So. Let's uh, deal with this fish and we'll be right back. Stay tuned for more BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Welcome back to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. No way! No, she's way out there. Popped itself. This is fun. Get to tie. Yeah. Get to tie Mikey. Oh, let me see if I can bump it off with a net for you. I mean, uh, net it. <laughs> There it is. He's full of life still. We just had a boat do a nice pass, a nice kingfisher. That's uh, that's one of our other guide boats at the lodge. But it is a nice boat. It's a kingfisher. Yeah, that's the 28. Beautiful. What do you got here? It looks like you switched your flasher over, Mike. And your flash fly. You've changed yeah. colors on me. Yeah, well, you're up, you're up there having a drink of water so I went and put on this chrome because nice. that darkness the dark clouds that we're getting in there yeah puts a little bit more light down there for it, a little bit more flat Woo! oh he got wet he's giving us a splash <laughs> nice fish Mike Thanks. way to go three 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 back in the game awesome <sighs> awesome fish oh good fish Mike good fish Learning with the pros, brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers. Today I'm going to teach you the technique of butterfly flaying a salmon. Your first cut is behind the pectoral fin. You cut down until your knife reaches the backbone. So once you make that incision, now we're going to cut along without going in or puncturing through to the rib cage. And then when you reach sort of the the rear tail, the anal outlet there, then punch through over top of the backbone and then continue filleting back to the tail. And then so now we've cut through the pin bones, we're at the backbone now. And now you want to go with a downward motion on your on your knife blade. You want to then go and fillet it in even strokes over top of your rib cage. You've got to make sure that you continue with nice long movements of the blade and so now we've popped through we've gone to the end of the rib cage there as you can see we're quite close to the to that so we're leaving as we're taking as much meat as possible and now we're going to flip it over leaving that on and do the same thing to the other side make that cut down and pop through and it's always good to have a sharp knife on hand Makes the job a lot easier. Again, we're going to punch her through again and continue flaying down. And of course, with the regulations in British Columbia, you have to keep a tail on one fillet. So you just snap that and break through. So the tail is attached to this fillet. And again, we're going to do that s- smooth action along the rib cage. Pop through at the end of the rib cage. 
cut off the carcass. You wash down hose, get rid of all the blood on here. You want to do that as quick as possible so it doesn't taint your meat. And so now we can go and cut these fins off here. Give you a little meal for the crabs. Slice it there. Slice it there. And now we're left with two beautiful fillets. We're ready for the barbecue or the oven or however you choose to cook your salmon. So it's simple, it's easy. You don't have to worry about getting your salmon first. It makes things a lot quicker. So hopefully that helps out for you. Well, it's 3-3 three, three now, Mike. <laughs> We're waiting for that fourth fish any day, any time now. Yeah. And uh, feels it's like been good. Set, feels like sudden death overtime. I'm nervous, actually. Are you? I'm nervous, <laughs> too. But I don't mind losing to a professional. You should be really worried about losing to an amateur like me. Yeah, but no, you're, uh, I fish with you quite a bit. You're, you're a decent fisherman. Oh, I appreciate that. Well, we'll just wait for the next one. We we'll always go. learn from each other. Hey, 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 inside, 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 inside. <laughs> He's still there? Is he still there? He's at the surface. He came up, popped the clip right away like that. Nice. No, oh. number four. Oh, no. Running towards me. Nice. We're swimming. Towards me. Oh, yeah. Does it feel like a good fish? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll clear this guy out of the way for us. Oh, that's right here. I got one more. Are you over top? Good fish. Looks like he's already been... Uh, had a bit of a tangle with somebody else, maybe. Yeah, looks like maybe a commercial net or something like that. So let's let him live. You know what? Here, I'll hold the rod for you. It is your fish. Sure. We can do the gaffer trick. And just pop him off. There you go. So we just put the gaff in the bend of the hook there, and you push down on the line, and you pull up. And that's it. And there she goes. What'd you get it on? That purple. This Haze. has been the tried, test, true. I had to change out the hook so earlier. Hey. The line was looking a little weak. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. That was Appreciate awesome. It. Appreciate Even though I lost. Here. So I guess my duties are washing up the kingfisher. I can handle it. That was a lot of yep, fun. Yeah, scrub brushes down there. Okay. Bucket of soap back Show me all that. All right. Well, Thanks thank you. It. Thank you for joining us today on BC Outdoors. Again, I'm your host, Mike Mitchell. Look for us next week. BC Outdoor Sport Fishing has been brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers, Rapala, Yamaha, Freshwater Fishery Society of BC, Arborcraft, and Kingfisher Boats. Scotty, Lawrence, along with